Lisa. Yes, baby girl. When I grow up, I want to be a woman to society. Then so shall you be. Hey, this is Lisa Landry. Welcome to One Men is Two Society. I'm speaking today with Jenna Hammond. Welcome to the podcast, Jenna. Thank you so much, Lisa. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure having you. And I want to talk to you about your first book, which you have just written. Yep. And it is called Downward Mule. Yes, the book was actually released March 7th from McLaren Cochrane. It's doing wonderfully. It's on Amazon.com, BarnesandNobles.com select bookstores throughout the country, and, of course, on my website, jennahammondauthor.com. I love to do events in schools and in yoga studios. I have something big coming up this weekend uh, at a town neighboring mine, so that should be great. And, um, yeah, I've been traveling around doing doing events when I can and reading it and just sharing the messages about community and confidence. Well, it sounds like a great thing to put out. I know it's primarily it's a book for children, for yoga, yeah? But it sounds like Mm -hmm. Downward Mule, that could be a title for for my life, actually. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, so it stems from um, the yoga pose Downward Dog. Mm Mm-hmm. Then again, there's plenty of people who read it that tell me, listen, I really don't like yoga, but I love your book, so it's great. It can be read as a traditional children's book, uh-huh. or you can stop and pause or and do the yoga poses featured in the book. It's actually the first book on the market that has a children's that's a children's book with an actual story, as well as helps um, school kids and parents on doing yoga poses. And of course, it's totally fun and zany and wacky. And this man, Steve Page from Australia, did the illustrations, who is incredibly gifted in terms of animals anatomy and but he's also hysterical and has so much humor so it really um I was very fortunate to be able to to work with him I had my pick of illustrators but when I saw his um his illustrations he knocked it out of the ballpark so yeah um it's a it's a great all-around book yeah it's very charming I love the poses and the illustrations because the animals are actually hitting the yoga poses Yes, and exactly. Uh-huh. It's very it's very nice because even when there's like little butts in the air, it's actually just a chicken's leg and stuff like yes. that. Like there's a some books don't pay attention to the sexualization of children, you know, like mm-hmm. the pictures. And it seems like your your book is very easy to look at and charming and the kids can find the poses easily and imitate the animals. Yes, totally. I mean, again, Steve was the illustrator that could do the animals and and in the yoga poses there were some publishing houses that were like we love this we don't know if we could get the animals to do it um you know quite like a person can but (laughs) you can totally follow the animals and I think kids love that idea that you know they really relate to animals I know when I was a child I, I especially loved animals my my two kids are exactly the same way um so what's nice about that is the connection but also the front and back of the book before the book actually starts there's pictures of lila who's the farmer's daughter the only real person in the book and she displays all the yoga poses in the book so in case a parent at bedtime when they want to rein in their kids or a kid looking at the book wants to see a child's body doing the poses you can just flip to the front or the back to see all the, the poses parents tell me they like that a lot because then when they're sitting down with their kids if they're not exactly sure how to do a pose they can just look right in the book and um the reason i also got into this is i'm a kids certified kids yoga instructor i don't right. lead kids classes generally unless it's it pertains to the book but i used to lead classes on weekends and run birthday parties and everything like that i was a writer during the week and an editor magazine editor but on weekends that was really the fun um because right. I was inspired by and, a, an article I wrote. Yeah, it does make it really fun to do the poses, too. If the, if you're looking at an animal striking the pose, it takes the pressure off of you to make a perfect pose. Totally. You know, I, I think a lot of people get intimidated. anything but perfect. I mean, it's, it's making up poses, you know, there's different ways to do different poses. You can... Whenever I do things with kids, um, I love to have them make up their own pose. What would a Johnny <gasps> pose be? What does that look like? I love baseball. Let me see you hitting that baseball bat. You know, you really can do whatever you want with it. Yeah, Every that's class great. I lead has a different theme, whether it's outer space or 
the barnyard or winter wonderland and you can make up poses about anything i think people so. get very intimidated by the idea of yoga some people might even think it's just some kind of new agey woo woo trophy wife fitness craze Mm -hmm. You know, um, but it is simplistic. It is very easy to do. You don't need a lot of equipment. You don't even need a mat if you don't have yeah. one. Some people might think that um, this is something weird, but it's actually super mainstream now, the idea of yoga. There's articles in Forbes magazine, Parenting magazine. Yeah, the book's actually been met, been featured in a few magazines as well, and not just yoga ones, which has been really fun. But Can whenever you... I do an event, it's it's really fun for me. I mean, I've done things at libraries, I've done things at camps, I've done things in classrooms, at bookstores, at yoga studios, so across the board. And I really don't need much. I mean, people always say, do you, we need mats? Should the kids bring mats? Do you need this? Or you know, and honestly, I'm like, you just need space, just space to, to, to move around. And really, like, the, the core of the book, not yoga, not animals, not, it's really just about building confidence. It's about Samuel is, is the main character, Sam. He's really not cool. He is like the social <laughs> outcast in the barnyard. He has no friends. He's so shy, but he has the secret talent, and it's yoga. And when he shares his yoga, it saves the farm. The chickens are laying eggs. The cows are making milk. And Lila is really his only friend, the farmer's daughter. She's the one who gets him to share his yoga to do it. So she has stuff to bring to the farmer's market. And in the end, Sam, like, really, he's his confidence is soaring. And he's he's all the, the farm is doing the yoga with him. And what's great is with kids is when I'm doing, you know, I see this when I'm doing events when parents send me pictures of their kids doing the poses, um, which I love. That's my favorite. Um, mm -hmm. When I get like friends of friends of friends get my number and then, you know, I get these images of these children across the world. But um, really it's the kids come out of their shell a little bit and they are doing the yoga poses. You know, I have two pretty outgoing children, but I've seen the kids when I'm leading they don't raise their hand they're shy and then at the end they're doing the yoga with everyone and you really sense that community spirit and yoga does mean union so while it's also union of the body it's really like to me it's coming for kids coming together and getting along which i think in this day and age we could all really use right <laughs> um everyone getting along and seeing people's benefits while well, sam might not he might be wobbly he might be slow he might be unsteady he's you know he's not sure of himself but then again he has the secret talent and he's he's just as worthy as everyone else so and he can even um, show the other animals how to open their chakras and unclog Totally, <laughs> yes, and get them all oming in the end under the cloud. So, What led you to get certified to be a yoga instructor for children? So I was working at a magazine. I was asked to write a story about um, this woman, how she opened her yoga studio. It was in New York City at the time, and it was really, it was a yoga studio for everyone, but a lot of special needs kids tended to go there and what kind of needs did they have that were special what sort of you know things? maybe there were some kids with autism or some kids who had a uh, difficulty in terms of mobility walking or using a hand or kids who were just you know, incredibly shy uh, somewhere on the spectrum and it was it was different in that sense mm -hmm. um while I was interviewing this this woman and Cami Evans I found out that her daughter had special needs. Um, you know, she had a stroke in utero. and Oh, no. Yeah, and um, she really wasn't walking much. And then what happened was, you know, nothing was really helping her doctors, but there was a yoga teacher who was helping her, and the yoga teacher would come to the house. Lily was walking more and moving more and cr crawling first and walking. One thing led to another, and well, she really was making strides that doctors didn't know she could. And when the yoga teacher said, you know, I'm going on to do different things, the mother was like, oh, no. She herself got certified. She opened this yoga studio. I actually trained under her. Too. I was just like, this is amazing. You know, that this, is amazing. Yoga, something that is like I like for fitness, has enabled this child to walk. And so it, that just, I was like, look at that. I, you know, I, I had this vision. I'm like, I'm going to open a yoga studio one day. Oh my <laughs> goodness. You know, I'll just use my writing for the PR of it or just to spread the word. And my sister and I were all into it. We were researching. And so that was kind of always on the back burner. And I was writing other manuscripts for books, but then I was like, you know what? There's no book like this. This is so inspiring to me. So I, I took it in that direction of the children's book, so. 
Yeah, it was you know? great. So I think my next book um, won't be about yoga, but I'll, I'm, I'm so happy that this was my first. So. <laughs> it's beautiful. What, uh, what are some of the benefits for children who do yoga? I mean, other than special needs children, obviously. Of course. Um, so the confidence, of course, for one, is just learning that they can do more things, use their bodies in different ways, feel um, self-assured enough to to do things and show other people their moves and make up their, you know, different yoga moves. Also for balance, one, one of my sons really loves surfing, um, and both my kids are getting into snowboarding, so in terms of standing on one leg a certain way, really getting that core strength and balance, which really does wonders for any sport you do. Right. Um, it can help calm kids. I like to use it at bedtime a lot when my boys are acting silly and crazy. <laughs> We get down into a mouse pose or child's pose and kind of just, re, you know, it's it's you're on the ground, you're in a little ball, and, and you can make silly eek, eek, eek sounds mm -hmm. as, as a mouse, whatever, but just kind of calming, calms us. And um, another benefit is just, yeah, the mind-body connection that you can move your body in a certain way and it help you feel a certain way. You do a lot of breathing in yoga, so if things are too fast-paced for you or you're having a stressful day... Take a deep breath. It's <laughs> going to be okay, which I really use all the time. Shouldn't so, we all? Um, yeah. Yeah, it has benefits for everyone. I would think that a child who's been through a significant trauma would be helped by yoga as well. Sure. Um, yoga, what's great with it is there's adaptations for any kind of yoga. Or, you know, you can, there's even for yoga for seniors that they, in nursing homes where you do it in a chair. With kids, I like to do toga, which is you're doing yoga with your toes. Uh, it's moving your feet. So <laughs> maybe someone's even just as something simple as, like, Will breaks his arm jumping off the playground a certain way. Well, he could still participate in toga, or he doesn't use that arm. He does something else. It's really – it's supposed to be gentle on your body. It's supposed to feel good. If it doesn't, you do the pose in a different way. So, And it's also really great for creativity, especially – kids yoga in the sense that you can invent new poses and turn anything into a yoga pose well, plus you can center yourself i mean i think we as adults forget that children have a lot more access to self-soothing and creativity and mindfulness than than we recognize because they do yes. act so looney toony can't sit down but they do have the ability to focus and meditate and hit those yoga poses and just relax into it yes it's amazing and i learned so much from kids from doing yoga with them i mean just in terms of their creativity and coming up with new ideas for maybe a book or just in life just things to laugh at like I tend to, um, you know, be pretty serious, be pretty perfectionistic. And with when you're around kids, you can't be. It's okay. <laughs> you know, it's all right to, you know, laugh at yourself, to have fun. To so. not be a so in control. That's the beauty yes, of being exactly. around children. Yeah. Exactly. It feels good. You know, everyone's smiling. They're having fun. It's like a good, it's just like a, it's a great time. So I'm really fortunate that I get to do this with kids and I get to even, I'm with my children so much, but when I'm practicing for an upcoming event or I'm brainstorming new lessons, I get so many new new ideas just going through the motions with them and coming up with new poses with them. Let me just ask you this for the listeners who might be out there thinking all uh, people who practice yoga are vegetarians. Are you vegetarian? Oh my gosh, no. Protein <laughs> is definitely my friend. <laughs> We're a very big, um, you know, a lot of fish, meat kind of everything that uh, I try to actually get my kids to eat a little bit of everything so you know last night I made a Thai chicken soup for dinner because my son had Thai food this weekend and was like you know I kind of like this so I was like great and of course that's lots of chicken in there um that my little one was like that's what mostly he was eating or the noodles in there uh -huh. so I'm also of the camp that you can't at least my personality is you shouldn't follow anything too strictly, you know, whether it's uh, the, a particular yoga pose and it's not feeling good or you're so one-sided one day. You know, if it works for my neighbor, that's great. But for me, that's how I am. And with kids, with doing the yoga, I just want them to have fun with it. And I hope with any of my books that the kids can translate it into their own way of doing it. You know, someone might not like a particular character in a book or part of a page or that's okay. You know, they might not like it's their own way of the story, just like it's their own way of following a certain, I'm a yogi, I do this. No, you can be who you want to be. Yeah, that's the whole goal there, isn't it? 
Yeah, totally. I mean, Sam really doesn't change. He just overcomes his shyness a little bit Mm -hmm. um, to share the yoga. So That's good. Kids do get confidence from doing this, obviously. Um, What should a parent or a guardian look for in a child yoga instruction studio? A place that is safe, isn't doing... There's a lot of partner poses in yoga that you can do things together. Sometimes a yoga teacher will have the child on his or her back or they'll have the kids holding hands and while the kids are their feet are joined you want a yoga teacher who is totally fun and on you know acting on the kids level but when a child in the room is being unsafe take a step back and make the situation still really empowering for everyone and not hurtful in any way so safe all around you want to make sure that the instructors um have received some type of uh, yoga certification or, Mm -hmm. you know, ask questions about how long long they've been doing it. Maybe you observe a class or do a free, you know, a trial class first. There's so many wonderful studios. And I know this woman, um, Shari at Karma Kids Yoga in New York City, she really goes around the world training different instructors. And so if you you hear that a place has been, oh, I've got my certification from Karma Kids, that's great. That's top notch. Um, so, and also just clean and a nice place to be. A yoga studio for kids should be inviting. It should be happy. It should be, kids should want to be going to do it. And yeah, I mean, once you really feel confident, you could bring it into your house and just really with your kids. I think that's so great. It really nurtures the parent child connection. So, um, obviously, again, in a safe way. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you're doing yoga with your kids, you're encouraging your children to have better postures. Um, it's going to calm their minds. They're going to have more mm-hmm. self-confidence, more of a connection to other human beings and animals even because of these poses. Mm-hmm. And I was reading online that children who do yoga, it may even um, delay the onset of puberty. Oh, that's so interesting. I haven't really read that. That's interesting. I had no idea of that either. It kind of, you know, it, there's some sort of connection to the endocrine system and the hmm. spine. Um, I don't know. I guess science will show more in the near future, I'll read more because I just haven't delved into it yet. But Mm -hmm. um, the mindfulness and the fact that a child can connect to their body and kind of slow things down may be one of the reasons why this happens too. Yeah, and I think kids' control is such a thing with children. They're all day long. They're told what to do, what not to do, whether. So I think yoga, it really allows kids to realize they're in control of their bodies and whether it's that they can control things and control their breathing to feel in a better way or to control a certain aspect of a yoga class or them doing yoga and making a pose what feels safe for them, good for them, or really fun for them. Mm -hmm. Um, I really think it gives kids a lot of a sense of empowerment. You know, of course, like that confidence and can-do attitude, but also it will really relate to all areas of their life, like whether they're stressed out or need to kind of focus before a big soccer game. You know, they have the ability to take a minute, take some time for themselves and, you know, realize that they're important, how their feelings are important and and definitely, um, especially with the breathing and just a sense of calm. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a valuable skill set. It's going to carry them through life. Um, we actually had a prison guard in Fairbanks, Alaska on the podcast a while back. And she's, mm-hmm. she's um, implementing yoga at the prison so that the inmates can actually do some of the things that you are you and I are talking about for kids. Yeah, just yeah, calming. for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So why not yeah, start yoga, them younger? Yoga is so, now it's at, you see it at hotels, um, you know, they have like in kitty programs and for children, you know, it's in so many schools. Um, I'm actually partnering with a school teacher next month to do an event at a school in, in New York City. And it's not just, you know, in, in places like New York City, it's, it's everywhere, which is really wonderful. Yeah, I used so. to live in New York. You, you need meditation in that town. Yes, yes, for sure, for sure. And a really big bendy. <laughs> yes, exactly. Thank you so very much. This is a charming book, Jenna. It's really it's really just wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. So I hope everyone, um, you know, look for Downward Mule in your bookstores and definitely get in touch if there's, uh, by going onto my website, jennahammondauthor.com. And if you have any comments or criticisms, I'm always open to everything. So... Thank you, Lisa, so much for sharing the messages of the book and for telling people about it. I think it's fantastic, and I'm thankful that you wrote this. And uh, namaste, my sister. Namaste. <laughs> Have an awesome day, too. You too, Jenna. Thanks. Okay, bye-bye. Bye.
Thanks, y'all, for listening. Please come back to next One Menace Wednesday. You can find me on my website, lisalandry.com. And if you sign up for my newsletter, you will receive a free audio download. Shout out, Ari. I love you, little boo-boo.